Uh, by the way, I actually think, fun fact, mm -hmm. I think we might be playing on, I'm not sure if we're playing on ladder editions or if we're playing on EPT editions. It says El Eagle. Oh, you're right, actually. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, you're right. My bad. You know, I had it in my head because I know that there was some, like, some Reddit post about EPT editions of ladder maps or something coming out, and I was like, oh, interesting. But that's actually, like, not for the current maps. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that there may that maybe they were going to use brand new maps, like, for APT this season, but it didn't end up happening. Yeah. That was the Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? We are, neither one of us are in the know about it, so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see what the future holds. In we know that, that we think we heard. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know what I saw someone say on Reddit who is reporting something that they also saw someone else say. Mm -hmm. That's classic. good enough for me. Yeah, so here Future is going to go for the Classic also in a one Racks expand. He's going to be opening with a Reaper, giving the gas first or the gas post barracks and now scouting as well to make sure that he can move across with that reaper so this SUV is pretty classic in that regard as well just wants to check for the hatchery and most likely will go back after that yeah when i usually think about scarlet facing off versus someone like future or something i actually usually think that she tends to scarlet has like a polarizing sort of play style where she is oftentimes really really macro normal standard focus and just tries to play really really well at what she does and then there's the other side of it which is she plays extremely cheesy extremely all in and i do mm -hmm. feel like she tends to lean toward playing a little bit more standard versus future and kind of just trying to catch whatever shenanigans he throws her way instead of trying to throw a ton of shenanigans his way i feel yeah, I think when you know your opponent and you know your opponent likes to be aggressive, then the the safest choice is just to be as safe as you possibly can, right? Like play whatever build order just accounts for safety. Like I wouldn't be surprised if Scarlet, if not this game throughout the series, at least opens once or twice with an overlord speed, right? Just to check what mm -hmm. Future is doing, just to gather that information. And Future is already being a little bit cheesy and, and this is not a classic Future move, right? Like a lot of Future moves are just two base aggression. And they are a little bit more more normal, no more normalized, and not so risky with uh, something like a proxy here. So this is cute and cool from Young Futuro. Yeah, we'll get to see how effective it's going to be. Overlord comes in, but not very far there for Scarlet, so doesn't really get a ton of information on what's not in the main base. So I am waiting to see when Scarlet's actually going to be able to identify the proxy starport, it seems like it's most likely going to just be as the Hellions actually get dropped into the main base or something along those lines. But yeah, there's mm. a, the, yeah, exactly. This circling right here that our observer has caught, he is the hero of Scarlet right now. It is the one that's going to be trying to gather information and that's it's actually going to gather information, but it will just see Hellions. They are on a weird pathway, so Scarlet probably smells something, but she just thinks for the moment that, that maybe they're going to poke at, the, at her third, where a, Whereas in reality, there is a proxy starport that now she's going to be aware of. So you can see the urgency with which, which with the queens are going to move back into the main. It's a little a little bit too late to reposition those. A little bit too late also on the Evo Chamber block. Five drones have already fallen as these Hellions continue on the pursuit. They are going to grab a few more here, but not the best lineup Ooh. there. So eight all day, two Hellions surviving. It is a successful attack for future, but it could have been even a little bit better. Yeah, that could have gotten even scarier with how off guard Scarlet was kind of caught there, but I think Future's still probably going to be pretty happy with how these trades have gone, especially if you can keep these Hellions alive and at the same time also allow that Starport to finish up the Liberator, because Liberator, even if it is known that the Liberator's coming, you can still be annoying with it, especially on a map like this. You have some dead airspace you can work with, so Future will love to get that out. An interesting play over here. Going to go ahead and morph into Hellbats. I thought it was maybe just to heal up the Hellions that were lower on hit points, but no, he's actually going to continue forward into this. Yeah, yeah, more often than not, if you have the hell of attack and if you've invested into it, it's going to be a pretty good push uh, this early on, especially, right? Like, because the links are completely useless against the Hellbats, you really need Bane links or a good number of Queens. Scarlet with great micro does save one of the Queens, maybe mm. over overreaching there is future as the Medivac cannot commit with the Hellbats. So now maybe it's a good a good moment to uh, to just morph back into Hellions and run away as the Liberator tries to find something else at the natural and will successfully get two drones. Yeah, frankly, a lot of good damage happening from Future in terms of the drone damage so far. Uh, obviously, the Hellbat attack not really working out, and the Medivac getting picked off is kind of the big loss there for Future. So 
That part he's probably not as thrilled about, but he really has been able to find some nice damage with just the combination of the earlier medevac drop and the Liberator. This has been really nice opening for him. Yeah, the Liberator is going to look to reposition yet again. Going to run away with barely any HP, so Future really playing with fire here. A lot of his units are, are very weakened. Hellbats are going to output a lot more DPS than Hellions are onto buildings, and so he's going to morph those into, into Hellbats before engaging here. Does group them up, and groups them up nicely as well, kind of tucking in the red ones and uh, creating less surface area so that the links cannot easily surround those. Yeah, great pick off there. And is also going to be able to pick off that Overseer that was getting the scouting information off. Scarlet getting momentarily supply block, but had a ton of Overlords on the way to complement that as she gets ready for her next stage of the game. Getting up that Bane Link speed, trying to get that Kree Star going forward. And that is one area where, because the Hellions have sort of been running around as Hellbats, they haven't really been keeping the Kree Star crazy in check. There are a lot of creep tumors, not necessarily super deep, but just in a lot of different directions. So Scarlet is going to be able to start erupting her creep spread in pretty much any direction she wants now. Yeah, so there's going to be Vayne Speed now finishing for uh, Scarlet as well as a Hydra then starting. So we might see a Hydra transition obviously perhaps into Lurkers, but Usually, I mean, usually when you want to go into Lurkers, you're you're looking for the Infestation Pit as well and like the further transitions. So I think this might actually be Hydra Link Bane play from the Queen of Blades, which is not super common, but it can be great defensively. So, so I, that I, actually, that makes a ton of sense, like just because she's going up against Future, right? Like it's yeah. just really good at holding. Yeah, and it's like you said, it's going to be those mid-game pushes that she's probably the most worried about for kind of style that Future oftentimes likes to play. A lot of those Banelings going to be finishing up and Banelings speed is done. There's also a good amount of crease right in front of that hatchery that Future's going to need a little bit of time for it to be actually cleaned up. And a lot of those creep tumors also going to just make things a bit more complicated. Is Scarlet going to set up any kind of flank? No. Going to go for a counter attack with all these Lings. Managed to get a kill on that building as well. And things are definitely getting complicated now for Future. Mm, yeah, she's gonna run in here. Only kills five SCVs. Was that a kill or a cancel? I, I, I think it was a kill. I okay. It may have been a cancel, and I missed it. All right. Well, in any case, uh, Scarlet is getting set up here to go, and now she's going. The queens are gonna engage first and soak up the first couple of tank shots as, as well as the marines. Now the marines are on the retreat, but off of creep, the mainlings are gonna really struggle to connect. And we've seen the situation a few times today. Now the turnaround is here for the marines. The important number here is that there is just two Banelings, 10 more in production, but Future is going to focus the, the two remaining, and that means the Queens are now completely exposed. The, the remaining Banelings are morphing, are going to be focused fired, and this could very well be Future's get that last Baneling! That's connect, uh, and that is a huge connection that clears nearly half of the Marines, bruises a whole other bunch. So that one Baneling, as it finishes morphing, makes this game very exciting that otherwise looked like Future would be able to just finish here. Yeah, I mean, imagine if another seven or so Marines were there. There were zero Banelings out on the map, only 21 Lings out on the map right now. Now, finally, a couple of Banelings are morphing in, but I honestly think I agree with you, Cats. I think that Future literally could have won the game off of that. He still might be able to, though, because a couple more Banelings are still just morphing in. The Hydra's not exactly in super high numbers, and the Lings all disappearing yet again. Only three Hydras remaining on the map. This is the entire army of Scarlet right here and she really needs some kind of good Bailey connection to push this army back. She is going to be able to find those on creep and buys herself a little bit of space, but I, I think the supplies don't lie in this situation right now. Future's got to be feeling good about it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the Hydras are, are a great backbone for the army. It is the, the thing that remains after the rest of the army gets wiped out. So if Scarlet can continue to hold, she will have some unit retention potential. But it is going to be a very difficult hold now. Future is uh, nearly doubling the army supply of Scarlet, and it's going to take this base again easily. Also scanning forward to clear the creep. Mm. And now with good tank position, I think he should continue on the aggression. Yeah, Scarlet having a little bit of, I guess, second guessing herself. She had the bailing run by getting set up, but as that attack came in for Future, she started pulling the bailings back home. Then she tries to run them in, but the bailings mm. don't actually have the plus two melee upgrades, so. Not actually killing any workers, just softening up a lot of them and knocking out the supply depots. And hey, don't get me wrong, supply block is great, especially in the situation where you're really just trying to buy yourself some time. But I am still a little bit worried that Scarlet is just not 100% committed to knowing like what exactly Future's game plan is. Mm -hmm. And it feels like she's 
kind of waddling back and forth. I'm like, I need to be offensive. Oh no, actually the army's still here. I need to be defensive. Mm, yeah, I think Future had an opening as well to go into the main of Scarlet. A little bit of hesitation there from him. Understandable seeing as two of the medevacs were really low and there was an overlord spotting. So if Scarlet repositioned and targeted those two medevacs, oh. Future could have been in a lot of trouble. He's stemming forward and this is one of the, one of the very impetuous uh, driven place of future okay now much better with the spread right because there was an opening there for scarlet to kind of just push into this while it was bunched up now this looks like a wonderful spread but hydras can still take advantage of this type of situation because you don't want to be fighting with less than the, the maximum amount of marines or at least a good number against the hydras or they are going to trade too effectively one hydra does expose itself and it's going to die in that process but the banings are going to really struggle to connect here so you know like it's it's a pick your poison type of situation for scarlet and Future both to some degree, but Future is maxed, so he really needs to make something happen with this. Yeah, I mean, Future definitely needs to do something, especially since now Scarlet actually during this attack has finished up her 2-2 upgrades. Future's 2-2 is very far behind in relation to Scarlet, so it is going to be a tough spot the longer this game goes on, I would say. And Scarlet yeah. also was setting up that uh, counterattack. It doesn't look like it actually accomplishes too, too much. She's even, in fact, Pulling it all the way back home, but Scarlet needs to keep this base alive. She, she cannot afford to go back down to like the four base situation again. Yeah, I think she's getting ready actually to abandon this base and by continue at the right time, but this is not the, the play perhaps. I mean, there's a beautiful flank here from Scarlet. It's gonna force Future to run to the side. And now actually Future on the retreat, a lot of his army was not here. He was maxed mm. and with a lot of extra supply, but too much of it was on defense. And now Scarlet manages to crush that containment, and that was a really strong force from Future. I mean, there was two Liberators, and I absolutely love that. The tanks also, but now the, all the anchors are gone, right? So it's just these Marines, and this complicates things for Future terribly. Is it going to be enough? He still has a supply lead, perhaps. Yeah, nice micro there from Future. He's target firing down the bailings as they approach his army. He's also trying to reinforce with a couple of Siege Changs here and there. But this is definitely a much more complicated situation now, especially as the Lurkers are starting to morph in there for Scarlet, which is just going to make it a lot harder to actually aggressively siege up a position. It's going to be a lot more difficult, a lot more time consuming to get into an aggressive spot. Scarlet is going to finally give up the space as she does at long last have that left center base now being established so she can kind of trade one base for another. But uh, I kind of wonder does future actually have enough back at home to deal with the ling run by looks like yeah there are a good number of units still here he still needs to kite this is still kind of dangerous so instead he's gonna hold position with the liberators there are a lot of us he's kind of exposed future does take a fourth base and the upgrades for now are even but now scarlet is continuing upgrading so getting her carapace upgrade as well as adrenal Ooh. plants for those circlings to have their crack cocaine are we allowed to say cocaine probably Probably not encouraged, but you know. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, we do have a nice surround over Beautiful. here wow. from Future. He knocks out not only the Hydras, not only the Lings, not only the Bailings, but also the Lurkers get taken out. Scarlet fires back with a good Bailing run by over on the top center side and is able to get quite a few number of the workers. Future down to 48. I think what's kind of interesting to me about this situation, Cats, is that Scarlet is still just stuck, basically uh, been on a four base economy for a vast majority of this game. So even if Future lost a lot of workers, he still is going to at least have four now going up to five bases and Scarlet's still just locked down to the four. Yeah, and where Future is pushing right now, he just can't forward to make sure that there's no banelings. And that's how confident he, he feels is like if there's no banelings burrowed, then he should be OK. The, the creep is not very far forward here from Scarlet. Future is going to siege or start the siege at the edge of that uh -oh. with Liberators and with tanks. I love this setup from him. Now adding Marauders as well. That's going to help tank against the Lurkers and against the Banelings. And Scarlet is kind of broke, so she can't really mm -hmm. access that tech very easily. Even though she has the buildings to make Lurkers, they are very, very expensive units. So Scarlet trying to break this once again. If this base falls, she's going to be in a similar position. But again, the brilliant player that she is, she's already kind of accounting for this base falling. So it's, a, it's an issue of buying time for her and then transferring back to the bottom and, and continue to play that game of chicken. Yeah, but I think uh, Future's doing a nice job continuing to keep her worker count low as well as mm -hmm. not, uh, you know, the base count staying at four yet again. The Liberator also continuing to find not the Overlord damage so much, but also actually just finding a couple of the drones here and there and also diverting some of the Scarlet's attention. This really has been a massive thorn in Scarlet's side and 
you can see the supplies have been reflecting it for a lot of this time in this game now a few minutes a future just being up about 50 supply and finally this is starting to get uh cleaned up finally this is starting to get pushed back but as we all start to like settle down from the continuous harassment and aggression from future futures at five bases scarlet is still just struggling to get up four yeah scarlet's only advantage right now is the upgrades at future even has more workers than scarlet so even it's not just real estate right it's also just the straight up economy and uh just the gathering rates that both players are working with so future is good to continue to apply pressure this is not classic future this is not a two or three base timing this is a man that has been expanding like wildfire behind his pressure and has been doing a wonderful job of it a lot of the time this is the problem with future is that he doesn't get his 2-2 two -two. now he has his 2-2 he's not getting his 3-3 three -three, but hey that's okay i mean that's a lot of progress in my mind he is doing an amazing job here going from uh, north to south and he will take the south once again and just uh, choking her, uh, his opponent. Yeah, I mean, this is not a game that Scarlet can continue to play of just every single time he takes out the south base to take the north base and vice versa because Scarlet is still losing out a lot more than Future is. You can kind of see Future was ahead 50 supply like a few minutes ago. Now he's up 80, 70 supply or so. And Scarlet is trying to just reinforce with more of these lurkers going up to 10 now. I think basically the path for her victory that I can still see is she takes a phenomenal engagement with these lurkers somehow. But that is a massive, massive ask. Yeah, it seems very unlikely. In fact, Future is going to pounce onto this lurkers. Well, they're unprotected, but no scan available right now, unfortunately for him. So he's not going to be able to push on further, actually. If he had a scan there, all of those lurkers are absolutely dead. So I just went through all of his bases really quick. And 39 is the highest orbital command that he has at the moment. So he would do well to add additional orbital commands as well. Or add a Raven, which no Terran will ever do. So, yeah. <laughs> you sounded Just... so sad when he said that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, uh, yeah, this is definitely Future's game to lose at this point. And I gotta imagine someone like Future is gonna be feeling even better oh. getting to play from this situation. I mean, I can only imagine if Future's gonna be feeling better going into game number two because he's just been ahead for now about like eight nine ten minutes or something of this game it's it's always a nice feeling just being like yeah i'm winning and i've just yeah. been winning for like 10 minutes exactly yeah it's a beat down right like you never feel like you've been uh, like out of control of this game you always feel like you've had the edge and it feels great so yeah future is gonna push in and finish the game here as the last few lurkers are gonna fall no more mules have been dropped and that means there's enough scans to continue to push on forward and Scarlet will have to tap out Future with the uh, start of an upset. Yeah, really, really well done there by Future. And I think it's definitely heartening to see, uh, see. Future has been one of those players that in the more recent seasons of DreamHack SC2 Masters, he's still been one of the players to look out for, right? I think after you go through like the top three that everyone knows about NA of Astrea, Neeb, Scarlet, I think Future has basically been around fourth to like six or so of players you just need to be wary of. But I think right now he's actually playing really, really well. And it's kind of reminding me a little bit more of the future of 2020, where Future, the future was of, uh, actually, I would say, more so the player that people are on the lookout for more than actually even Astrea and stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I don't know if he's like necessarily playing better than Astrea is right now just off of that one game, but it definitely heartens me to see how well he's playing. He reminds you of the future of the past. The future of the past. I like that. I like that. He's he's reverting back to the old school future. Back. Yeah. Why doesn't he revert forward? I don't know what I don't know what future future is. Future future. Yeah. Future of the future. I mean, we have future of the present. We have future of Terran, but he's a brood war player. Wait, you, no, you know the, I mean future of Brodos. No, no, there's, there's literally a Terran player named Future for Brood War, and his handle is Future of Terran. No, this is Future of Terran. Am I mixing them up? Hold on. Yeah, the Future of Brood War, fu Brood War Future uh, is a Protoss, Protoss player. Oh my god, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Richard Future Almond SC, is, Future SC is the Brood War player. You're right. Yeah. Oh, I'm actually Richard quite disappointed Almond. myself. Is that right? Is that his name, Richard Almond? I think it is. Future, the Brewer future. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know it's Rich something. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool yeah. name, Almond. 
In the top left hand <laughs> side, it is the future of the present for Alpha X. And down here in the bottom right, she is the Red Zerg player from Shopify Rebellion. It's Scarlet. Cats. No shade for anyone else, but you think Almond is a cool ass? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? Like almonds, like the nuts? I think it's almonds like the nuts, but I'm not sure. It might be almond or something like that. I always just, you know, like I always can just say oh, almond. Almond, and... I can get behind almond. That's the thing is, if I say almond, because I have an accent, you can't really tell what I'm saying exactly. So I can get away with it until I get questioned. If I'm, if you're like, oh, can you spell mm -hmm. it? I'm like, oh, I don't know. But if I don't spell it, you have to assume that I said it right. Or you're just, you know, you're just kind of... Uh, being a little bit racist, <laughs> oh, no. like judging my um, accent, you know. Well, yeah, I get away with a lot of stuff with uh, with the accent there. <laughs> Fair enough. Maybe I should get an accent. Yeah, you should. <laughs> and get an then accent. I can just call people racist if they say I'm mispronouncing. Exactly. Well, you don't have to call it. You just you just leave it. You just leave it up in the air. You know. Yeah. Or like I said. Exactly. Oh, that's what I said. It's like, oh, really? Oh, oh really? Yeah, of, uh, what do you mean, oh, really? <laughs> Man, you got to figure it out. I, I like this game plan. Mm -hmm. I like this game plan. I love it. Uh, All right, let's see if we like the game plan from Future as well. As he's going to scout once again. Going to find that this time around, the hatchery is a little late. And that means that Scarlet opened with a, a, a pool first. So that means the Reaper will stay back. Doesn't need to move out. There's going to be those annoying links out on the map. So Future wasn't even making a Reaper anyway. Just going to go straight into the double Marine production. Yeah, I actually want to throw back to the last game also and remember that the last game, well, it wasn't game ending damage. It wasn't something that I'm going to cite. The reason why Future won was the opening, but Future did find quite a bit of drone damage with his Hellion drop. He found some extra damage and good amount of like just delayed mining time with Liberator harassment and everything. There was a lot of success found in the early game harassments that did put Scarlet a little bit further on the back foot. And Scarlet did find a couple of like counter hits in that regard, but I do think that's important to note, or I did, but uh, we do actually see a Roach Warren popping on down pretty early on here for Scarlet. So, you know, we, we may be ignoring a lot of what I just talked about. I do love this from Future though. It's really, it's really cool because he's going to be showing his barracks, which is not a usual move, but it is annoying for the Zerg, right? And, and he can create chaos and he is a very good player playing chaos. So I like that he's kind of mixing it up. At the same time, he doesn't commit further for the Overlord. Scarlet is going for six, seven roaches already. So this is heavy commitment from the Queen of Blades. And this is the kind of build order that, you know, Ravi, it's a little bit sketchy because, because this is the type of map where roaches kind of thrive. This is the strategy that Scarlet, I believe, employed against Epic on this map as well. It is the exact same opening. So if Future was watching those games, if Future expects that this is what Scarlet might do, he could have a perfect response. Does he have a perfect response? Not really. But he has an okay mm. response. The bench is going to be a little late. Yeah, that's going to make things a little bit more difficult. And of course, just the positioning of everything is going to make things a little bit more complicated if uh, those Ravagers are able to get nice up and close and personal. But first, they do have to break through the bunker on the low ground. Kelly is going to try and buy a little bit of time here, deal out tiny bits of damage to these Roaches, like that they're getting some good splash damage done on some of them. But the repair is going to be extremely important. It's really just about minimizing losses. Future should not die to this, but he really doesn't want to lose more than he has to. Yeah, so the timer is on Scarlet because the Banshee is about to pop up. And when that Banshee pops out, it is going to be just about the cleanup here. So another CV or two are going to get sniped here. Scarlet just trading those units that are not really going to scale for whatever CV she can get. Future now realizing that that's what's going on and that there is no possibility that he will end up uh, getting broken. So he's going to continue now SCV production, get the extra tank continuing on the Banshee production. I would love to see a third CC, but if we don't see a third CC, then we have to start preparing for a two-way soul lane. So we'll see which one it is. With Future, it could very well be either. And I would almost prefer the two-way soul lane, but it's going to be a third CC, I believe. Boom. Boom. There it is. Mm. A little unfortunate there for Future as he doesn't get the Ravager, but Hellions managed to make their way forward because all of the Queens are brought oh, to the baby. front line. And quite a few drones getting roasted over here. Ooh. Remember, this is a 
drones at a time that Scarlet really does Ooh. not want to be losing them. Ooh. She's already on a fairly oh. low count. Oh. oh my god. That, that, there was a, a shot for free, but Future yeah. had given up on it properly, right? Correctly assesses the situation. He thinks, okay, if Scarlet just continues to click on my Helion, it's dead. I don't get another shot off. But if he had actually continued to pay attention, Scarlet kind of messed up, left the Helion to leave her an extra shot, and that would have been one or two extra drones that he could have killed. So a little bit sad there, but it is what it do. It is what it do. Well, the Banshees have already been pretty nice for just pushing some of the units back, killing off some of the creep tumors, but ugh, taking a lot of damage. Loses the high hit point Banshee, actually, funny enough. The other one is going to be able to get out of there alive for now and might be able to delay this base for a little bit, at least do some chip damage to it until the queens get over here. But yeah, at the end of the day, I think that Scarlet took some nice or some decent drone damage, but Future is probably just going to feel like things are pretty evened up at this point. Yeah, and this Banshee is going to be driven away, but will survive. And that is something for Future as well. He is lagging in supply a little bit. 66 workers for Scarlet against 49 of Future. As Scarlet is a little bit supply blocked with three Overlords on the way. Not very characteristic of the Queen of Blades. Make it six Overlords on the way. Lucky for her, she is going for the Roach. And she is at a pretty good drone count where, you know, you're not mining inefficiently by any means. It's good saturation for three bases. So if she wants to be like, oh yeah, I meant to do that. She can just produce Roach and she will have exactly the same amount of roaches that she would have if she didn't get supply blocked, right? So it kind of limits her chances if she wanted to drone up. But if, you know, if she was going to produce roaches, again, she's going to have the exact same number. So I think that she is kind of going for that approach. Now going back to droning after a wave of roaches. Mm, I'm not sure. Yeah, fun little stuff of how Zerg mechanics work for larva and mm -hmm. general production and stuff, so... Nice advantage for that, but Infestation Pit finishing on up there for Scarlet. Last game, she was able to get up to her high pretty quickly, but this is obviously a very different comp. Very fascinating, which was once he sees a Zerg player going for Infestors, he thinks that they, he thought that they were not that great, and he felt more confident and comfortable once he saw Scarlet going for Infestors instead, even though he did eat some pretty big Fungal Growths, and we do see the Banshee going down there as well. Yeah, I. I think, I think he he didn't mean that they weren't so great. He meant that mm -hmm. he feels like whenever Zerg's going for investors, they feel like they're behind, and that's why they're making them. Ah, uh, yeah. So, I, so that's why right. he feels so good about it. Because I, yeah. I think investors are great, and I think Scarlet, of all Zerg players, makes investors regardless of her position. But it does mm -hmm. make sense to make investors when you're behind, because a big fungal can bring you back into the game in the same way that a big yep. disruptor or any sort of huge AOE spell can bring you back into a game because it has so much more potential. But if it whiffs or if it doesn't hit the maximum amount of units that it can hit, you know, you're you're in a worse or in a similar position as before. So it is kind of that high risk, high reward uh, energy that you get from Fungal and even from Neuroparasite. If your Neuroparasite persists throughout a fight, if you can get a Thor, for example, you can have a thousand resource swing during the fight. Does can the neural parasite always stick? Not necessarily, right? So infestors are kind of like see, for example, that was not a great fungal. That was just five marines, mm -hmm. but uh, but it it has the potential to fungal half of this army. Yep, something that future absolutely just has to respect. He cannot move too far forward and then rely on splitting afterwards. He actually has to be ready to be split at any given moment's notice. Now, Roaches are making their way for a little counterattack, and Future has a few Marines left over back at home. I'm not sure if it's 100% how many Marines he needs to clean that up, but it is also just going to distract him and potentially provide Scarlet not only a little bit more time, but also an opportunity to get a big fungal off on the front lines. Yeah, but uh, Future now knows also that Infestors are present, so he can be a little bit more careful. He can kind of have like those pseudo like pre-splits like we see up against Banelings as a few roaches are going to move in the back, but that's going to mm. allow for Scarlet to move up on the front and pick up one of those tanks or two. A huge fungal there, but it's actually not that big, right? Like, it, it could have been better, perhaps. And uh, yeah, I mean, Future is still pushing on forward. Max supply for either player. The roaches in the back did escape and will continue to harass instead in the, uh, and cut reinforcements for Scarlet or from Future to Scarlet. So can Future do it, Ravi? It's a good question. 2-2 Two is about to finish off, so these engagements are going to start going a little bit better for Scarlet in a few moments' notice. 
We see the investors trying to get close enough to the front lines to throw, start throwing out those fungals. We see some big fungals coming out, but a nice concave over here from a future. He moves out of the range of a lot of his siege tanks. In the meanwhile, a lot of SCVs are going down to the other side of the map. Future is committed to getting some kind of damage done over here. The siege tank putting in so much work. Scarlet maybe over committing on the defense here. Loses a lot of roaches for the end and maybe giving Future a second wind, but it is a second wind very much off the back of he needs to get something more done over here in order to stay in this game. Yeah, it is on site. A very strong army still. The Biles barely do end up finishing that tank off. Very important. Not too many tanks uh, remaining here, but the pre the army that's present here for future is very strong. Remember, the supply of Scarlet is a little bit inflated by the fact that she is using a lot of those very supply inefficient uh, roaches here. Marines are kind of flanking and they did not intend to do that. Their commander just let him astray for this uh, opportunity. And now the, ra the Ravagers are trying to connect the Biles onto the tanks. One or two will connect finishes it off with normal shots and now Scarlet looks to be stabilizing as most of the tank line has receded. So Future taps out and it is a 1-1 situation that we have here, but very close from the young American. Future definitely made it look very, very close there. And it seems like even just a few things have gone a little bit differently in those trades. There's a potential world where Future actually ends up closing that series out two to zero, which is pretty crazy to think about. But we are headed into a map number three now with the tied up series. And I would argue that Future is playing well enough that he could very well take this. I think if I had to do predictions and stuff now, I would not necessarily go with the Scarlet 2-1 anymore. Yeah. Oh, you wouldn't go with the Scarlet 2-1? You would go with the Future? You know, I, I not not to say that I think Future is the favored player or anything right now, but like, I don't know. I, I feel like they're is a little bit of the way that Future has been playing that I have a little bit more faith in right now. Just, I feel like momentum-wise, he's been able to get little advantages here and there and play really well. I would act, you know what? I actually would have, I would change my my prediction like of Future 2-1. Like the, the lukewarm take is not so good, Ravs. So yeah, yeah. You gotta go with the Luke Skywalker instead, you know? The Luke Skywalker take it. Was Luke Skywalker the strong take? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question too. I guess personality wise, maybe not, but <laughs> yeah. strength, strength wise, yeah. Right? Fair enough. Yeah, he did have a, he did have a lot of strength, even if he didn't yeah. he had have a, it a yeah, lot in character. Saber, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, personality wise, he was not particularly like self assured, right? Like the whole scene and the whole deal with Darth Vader, I don't think he, um, I don't think he comes off off of that looking like perceptually like um like a great hero or you know like someone that you want to be like yeah I want to be like yeah. like I've never heard a kid be like yeah I want to be Luke Skywalker when I grow up you what? know no, 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 <laughs> I think that is common but I think it's because oh, people really? want to be a Jedi Oh a Jedi I've heard I, yeah. but Luke Skywalker in particular like I don't really or Kylo Ren for that matter like no one wants to be Kylo Ren. no one wants to be Kylo Ren there's cool there's cooler people to be <laughs> Yeah I Actually have, that's not um, true I do know quite a few people who really enjoy Cosplaying as Kylo Ren. Cosplaying as Kylo Ren. That's interesting. Yeah. You know, that's, his outfit's not for me, but I do know that there are a lot of people who really like his outfit. All right. Well, Kylo Ren enjoyers out there, not to be judged as uh, Kylo Ren would not welcome judgment either. He would probably be very offended. In the bottom left-hand side of the map, it is the Queen of Blades. It is the Red Circle player, Scarlet. Whoa, Meow, you did me dirty there with the twist. And up here at the top right-hand side of the map, the Blue Terran player, our North American boy. He is the future of Terran. Team Alpha X Esports. Wait, isn't he future Brutwar? Brutwar? W B W future. Are you just making fun of me, or are you? Yeah, okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> I'm like not sure if this is a shot or honestly confused. <laughs> I guess that is your shot, right? Because I I could see me being confused about something like that. I wasn't sure if you got them mixed up like I did earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I well could played. see me doing well that. Played. Yeah. Well played. Well played. Oh, yeah, I I am actually really also happy to see the future is not just like proxy rexing because I think that is something future has a habit of doing sometimes or has, I would say, had a habit of doing sometimes in a series where things are a little bit hectic or close or back and forth and stuff. And it'll get to like a game two or a game three. 
And I actually, I think there's a lot of value in throwing out like the proxy racks or the cheese and things mm. like that. But I think sometimes future became almost predictable with that kind of stuff. And it's, it's great to see that I think future these days, especially at a time where I'm not 100% sure how confident he is uh, about his gameplay these days. Mm -hmm. It's really nice to see that he's still just kind of sticking to like a little bit more standard stuff. Yeah, I asked him. I asked him if he's playing a lot recently, and he was saying whenever he, whenever the inspiration strike strikes, I think is what's his answer <laughs> basically. So, yeah, you know, I think he's playing from time to time, but also, like, there is something underlying that statement, which is that he is the type of player to experiment, to actually have ideas that he wants to pursue, and you know, like, he will have shower thoughts and like, you know, like, kind of pursued mm -hmm. ideas that he wants to perfect or strategies and stuff like that. He is a unique player in that regard. Yeah, I, I don't think he is one of the players who just kind of says, here's what needs, here's what everyone says I should do, and I should just go follow the pack in that regard. I think he still will play standard styles and he'll still learn everything. But like you said, I think he also is a player who enjoys thinking for himself and, and yeah, is definitely a lot for a lot of fun stuff like this, where there is no overlord. We actually see Scarlet, also a player who thinks a lot for herself, and actually said, well, Future did that weird barracks lift thing against me and sniped mm -hmm. off my overlord to push it back a few games in a row. I'm just not going to put my overlord there. Yeah, so Scarlet definitely thinking ahead, but also Future doing something that no one really does. And it is very interesting, right? Especially playing to his reputation because you don't know what to expect from Future. So not knowing when the Hellions are moving out, how many Hellions are moving out, or even if Hellions are moving out at all, or if it's something different. Right, is information that you do want to deny. And again, playing off of your reputation of your future, it probably has your opponent overreacting or just generally overthinking, right? So it's mm -hmm. a cool thing to do. A hundred percent. I think especially when you're playing against a Zerg, because I think Zergs typically really do want to have all the information they can get, right? Like they are making constant decisions about their unit production in slightly more committed ways when they make the decision than maybe like a Protoss or a Terran where it kind of comes in like more incremental spurts and then Zerg production is just like a big burst. So I think Zerg players really, really want to have a little bit more information about kind of what's going on. Mm -hmm. No doubters. Scarlet with very good creep threat here, spending a lot of energy from those Queens on, on, on creep right now. So if there was something like a Hellbat push again, Maybe it would be a little bit more difficult to, to hold, but that said, I mean, Scarlet is really good at just having her queens in position and, and holding that type of attack as we saw in the previous game. So maybe it's just perfectly fine to use all of your um, energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think Scarlet, always known for her cruise spread, really wants to just get that going. And I think what I would say about Scarlet's cruise spread is that it's not usually about as much depth these days. It really is just about breath. I feel like she's very good at just getting the creep spread in every direction, more so than just getting it really far in one or two directions. Mm -hmm. yeah. So future this time around, Ravi is adding four, make it five barracks. This is going to be a little bit of a two base all in by the uh, three base all in or three base big push by the looks of it. We're expecting that more barracks will be added at this point, right? It looks like he really wants to wants to push on the aggression here. Mm -hmm. Starport is finally going to move over and uh, grab that reactor as tanks are likely to be starting starting to be produced from the factory. So I think we're going to have another one of those uh, big parade pushes from future. Gotcha. Do you, do you think this is going to be like more barracks being added on, going to like eight racks and putting on pressure? Or is this just going to be a committed push, but there's still like a good fallback behind it? Uh, I'm actually not sure, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I wish we had uh, Benjamin Baker here to really... <laughs> explain the intricacies of this build. I think that just given that it is future, it is unlikely that he, you know, like I think you go back to your comfort zone here and this does look like a lot of production setup for me. But uh, but yeah, I don't know if there's room for more also with the tank production. So yeah. I think we're definitely, it's definitely a, a committed attack, right? And it's a single eBay as well. Not much of a transition. And again, just knowing future, thinking like he might, uh, I, think, I think it's pretty committed. Okay. Well, Future gonna start kicking off some of the creep tumors, opening up the pathway for his push that'll be coming out later on, especially since he's still not really uh, getting started with any kind of armor upgrades from his engineering bay. Uh, really does want to get something done 
with that big attack. Yeah, there we barracks. see. Yep, three more barracks going up to the eight racks. Adding on some missile turrets as well, which is uh, it's just blind missile turrets, right? He doesn't actually know anything about like whether or not there's a spire or not, I guess. Yeah, but but he does have the precedent, I guess, of previous games and even today in general, like we saw it in, in Laser versus Spirit, like those surprise muta can really put a, a stall into this push and uh, really slow things down for the Terran player, right? Like it can mm -hmm. really pull you back. So I think he just wants to not have to worry about that. And it's hard to blame him. And this looks yeah. pretty powerful here. No, 100%. I, I think Scarlet especially is a player who's known for her mutalisks and actually preferring to go for mutas when possible. So uh, I definitely don't blame him on that kind of decision. But well, you see a lot of these Marines trying to pick off some more creature tumors, having to evacuate into the medevacs. And the Queens are here to quickly respread it. It's just going to continue to delay the push in longer and longer. And remember, the longer the game goes on, the further behind the future is going to be. This is a very committed attack. He only has plus one weapons on these Marines. He doesn't have plus one armor. He doesn't have plus two, plus two on the way. Mm. Scarlet is already starting to overpower this army a little bit and Future having to evacuate yet again. But I think the biggest problem is that Future isn't actually anywhere close to any really high value target buildings or anything else or drones. He's very far back and he's on a timer. Yeah, the good thing, I guess, if there's any for future is that he is maxing out pretty quickly. He doesn't really have much of a follow up and the next wave of his army, the reinforcements that he had been leaving behind in case of a ram by is gigantic. It is like double. It, it, it basically doubles the, the presence of his army. At the same time, Scarlet, just at a perfect time, is moving out with her army. So for future, it would have been ideal if this army moved out right as this army of Scarlet was moving in. But Scarlet is going to time it perfectly and this is going to apply pressure both into the third and the natural expansion so future has to really grab that uh that little hole between the the, the supply depot or where the tank is but it's gonna be enough with some some cvs being pulled now future feeling confident to push on forward scarlet setting up once again and as per usual a little bit of a surround a lot of these bailings at the front are actually gonna connect the ones in the back not so much however and scarlet is kind of maybe overexposed here with the hydras as there is nothing to tank for them now the marines are on the chase but leaving tanks exposed for those six or so Hydras to take over with those uh, few links remaining or spilling in. And now Future is pretty committed. That he doesn't have any Anchor units here. Wardy, but neither, or Wardy, Ravi, but neither does Scarlet as those Phoenix are gonna get taken down. A uh, really, really big chase going on over here. I think Future is identified that the economy is not necessarily the highest value target. It's actually just killing off the army in large enough numbers that Scarlet is just not gonna be able to oh. Bunch it up together enough to actually mount some kind of defense. Future knows that he's already going to be very all in. So he's Whoa. trying to take as much as possible. He's going to find some of these banelings over here for Scarlet. He's trying to micro back. He's micro back Whoa. also into the Hydras. A big bailing connection. Knock out so much of the army supply there for Future. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has enough anymore. Yeah, this is the th maybe this is a Juniper moment just because I want to see if those Marines mm. could have run out of creep. Like it looked like he chose the path where there was creep, but I don't know if there was something that was blocking him from running behind. Because because as I saw the scenario, yeah. I was like, yeah, that makes sense that he's running there. But after the fact, I'm I was like, well, there's no creep behind him. Like why not just run backwards? And th and that would have made it so that he didn't have to feel committed to clicking on each of those pain links to try and get a favorable trade. The Banelings do end up connecting because there was too many of them, inevitable. And Scarlet with that is gonna push on forward and by the looks of it, look to close this game. Yeah, this yeah. is absolutely Scarlet's game to lose. This was an all in by Future and he got really damn close to making this all work out, but he doesn't have any upgrades. He doesn't have an army supply. He doesn't have a great economy to fall back to in Scarlet. While there was a potential for her to maybe like lose some bases or something when she was on the retreat, Future knew that knocking out one hatchery in the time it would take to kill that one hatchery was not going to be enough. And even killing off a second hatchery would still put him in a kind of awkward spot where he's still down basically three upgrades. Uh, it was not going to be an ideal position. So Future tried to make the most of it, wasn't quite able to with those trades. And now we're going to see Scarlet, Queen of Blades, overrunning future and taking her secured victory here in this best of three.